page as page three. We are talking about theoretical versus experimental probability today. Theoretical versus experimental. So when we were talking about probability on Monday, we are talking about the basic idea of when we perform an experiment or when there is an experiment and we've got a list of total outcomes and what the specific event is, what we focused on was what was called theoretical probability. So with theoretical probability, we like to go ahead and label that as the probability of what should happen. It's what should happen. Doesn't always happen. So if I give you a coin, theoretically, when you flip the coin, it should land on heads half the time and it should land on tails half the time. But that's not usually what happens. Okay, that's not always what happens. Okay, maybe I might flip the coin 10 times and it might land on heads eight and tails two. So theoretical is just giving you the idea of here's what is possible. So in theory, this is what should happen. This is what we can expect to happen. So another important thing to understand is that with this probability, it's never changing. When you're talking about the theoretical probability, the theoretical probability is solid. It does not change. The theoretical probability of flipping a coin and landing on heads is always going to be one half. It will never be anything else in theory. Okay, so it never changes. And again, I told you guys before, it's the event over the total number of outcomes. Another way of looking at it, or stating it, it's the number of favorable outcomes. So what we're favoring, what we're wanting to happen, that's the event out of that total number of outcomes, the number total of possible outcomes. Okay, so again, I'm gonna fall back to the coin. So if I say, hey, the probability of landing on tails, we know in theory, on the coin, there is one favorable outcome for tails out of two possible outcomes on a coin. That is never going to change. Your probability is always gonna be one half. If I'm rolling the die, the probability of landing on a one is always gonna be one out of six, or the probability of landing on a five is always gonna be one out of six, because that number only occurs once on the die out of six numbers. That's theoretical. Now, with experimental, that's a little bit different. In experimental probability, you are physically doing something. So, so something else I might wanna add up here before I move on. Up in this little section right here, another little star. There is no action. There's absolutely no action occurring with theoretical probability. You are not actually doing anything. You are looking at the coin and going, okay, in theory, it's gonna land on heads this many times, or in theory, it's gonna land on a five when I roll the die this many times, one out of six. That's the theory of it. No action whatsoever. With experimental probability, there is action. You are physically performing an experiment. So in this case, we call it the probability of what actually happens. So theoretical is what should happen, experimental is what actually does happen. It's kind of like the idea of how many of you are always like, 
or ever thought to yourself, I study, I study, I study, but I still don't do well on the test. That happens. In theory, if you study, 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 then you should do really, really well. What actually happens is sometimes it doesn't go so well. I mean, in theory, if you study, 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 you should get 100. Does that actually happen all the time? No. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Okay? So the theory and the experiment are different. Now, for here, with theoretical probability, that probability never changes, but with experimental probability, it's constantly changing. Okay? Daphne might flip a coin 10 times, and then Ethan's going to flip a coin 10 times. Are they going to get identical results? Probably not. The chances that they would get identical results at the exact same time is very slim. Okay, so the experimental probability for her is going to be different than the experimental probability for him. If I give everybody a coin to flip, we're going to have several different experimental probabilities happening. Okay, so experimental probability, the probability is always changing. Write that down. The probability is always changing. And then another really important one, there's action. You are physically performing the experiment. There has to be an action occurring with experimental probability. You have to physically be flipping a coin over and over and over again for a specific number of trials. You have to be rolling the die. You have to physically be flipping or spinning the spinner or pulling something out of a bag. There is actual action occurring there. Now, with experimental probability, this is the number of times an event occurs. And now it's based off of your total number of trials. So how often did you perform the experiment? So a coin only has two outcomes, but if I flip the coin a hundred times, I'm no longer looking at a two on the bottom, I'm looking at a 100 on the bottom. Let's go with that actually. So let's say that I'm going to flip the coin 100 times. and it lands on tails, we'll say 56 times. So now the probability for tails is going to be different. Okay, it's 56 times that it landed on tails, so 56 times that Tails occurred, that's the event, tails occurred, out of 100 trials. Now, as always, we need to simplify it. They're both even, so that means they're both divisible by 2. Actually, they're both divisible by 4. I'm going to go ahead and simplify it right off the bat. What's 56 divided by 4, guys? Leo? 14. And then 100 divided by 4 is? 25. So you get 14 out of 25. Okay, so there is a difference between experimental and theoretical probability. It's all about that action occurrence. Okay, let's 
say we've got a three section spinner. Of equal size. And then here's the results. So the first thing that I want to know is A, what is the theoretical probability of pink? And for part B, I want to know what is the experimental probability for pink? What's the theoretical? What's the experimental? So again, it's a spinner of equal size, three sections of equal size. So it's a good idea that if I go ahead and draw a spinner and split it up into three equal sections, and I know one of them is going to be pink, and one of them is going to be green, and one of them is going to be blue. So my theoretical probability is based on the item, right? No action. There's no action occurring. I'm just looking at the item right now and going, hey, based off of my item, my spinner, what is the theoretical probability that pink is going to occur? So how many pinks do I see on my spinner? One. How many total sections are on my spinner? Three. So it's one favorable outcome out of three possible outcomes. That's roughly about 33%. Experimental probability is based off of the action. Another a word for action is results. Frequency. These are terms that mean an action occurred. A frequency table, a result table, a graph displaying that information. So here, how often did pink occur. Kaden? 15 times. How often did I perform the trials? How many trials were there? Kaden? 30, right? We can easily find that out by going, hey, 10 plus 15 plus 5. 10 green, 15 pink, 5 blue. Add that all together, it's 30 trials. 15 out of 30 can be simplified. They are both divisible by 15. And you're going to get one half. Okay, so theoretical probability is one third. Experimental probability was one half. Maybe about 30 seconds to get that copy down and then we're going to move on.
All right, I'm gonna go ahead and flip over to page four. Don't forget to label page four. Again, every time we go onto a new page, you're gonna want to make sure you label it. So that way, when I tell you to turn to a certain page for a notebook check, you're ready for it. All right. And if you weren't able to get all of it from one page, then when notes are done, you're more than welcome to borrow my notebook to finish copying, okay? All right, let's go ahead and do another problem. So, like I told you before, results or frequency identifies as an experiment occurring. So, let's go ahead and pretend that we rolled a number cube, a die, and here are the possible outcomes. So, we landed on a one seven times. We landed on a two, three times. We landed on a three, three times. Landed on a four, five times. Landed on a five, twice. And my favorite number is six, so we're gonna land on it 12 times. Okay, so here is my frequency table for rolling a die. However, I still want to know what is the theoretical probability for landing on a 6, so roll a 6, and then of course the experimental probability to roll a 6. Go ahead and do that one on your own. All right, so let's go ahead and first thing that we need to know is that with theoretical probability, are we looking at this table at all? No. When doing theoretical, we don't care about what's in this table of information. All we care about is an actual die. Okay, so that means we're thinking about the die. So like this is two, we want it to land on six. Say maybe this is the four, okay? We're thinking about the number cube and we want the probability that we're gonna roll a six. So how often does a six occur on a number cube? One time. So that's one out of how many possible outcomes? Six. So one six or roughly about 17%, it comes out to 16.6 .6 repeated percent. Okay, experimental probability, that's when we focus on the table. So the probability of rolling the six then is gonna be based off of this information right here. That we landed on a six, how often? 12 times. Out of how many total trials? 32. If you add all of the trial or the, you know, the outcomes together, how often we landed on each of the sides of the die, you get 32. So 12 out of 32. Now, they're both divisible by four. Both of these values are divisible by four, so that is gonna give you three eighths, which is roughly 33% or 32.5%, okay? Now, let me ask you another question then, part C. If I roll the die again, what is the probability that I will land on a six. If I were to roll the die again, what's the probability that it's gonna land on a six? 
which probability do you think you need to use to identify a future role? Do you think it's the theoretical or the experimental? Sarah? Yeah. Why? Okay, you don't know what you're gonna get. Anybody else? Kaden? Why? Okay, because there's still a one six chance of getting it again. Okay. So let me pose the question to you guys. If I decide I'm going to roll it again, and I want the probability that it's going to land on a six, has an action happened yet? So what probability is no action? Theoretical. So in order to make a prediction on an action that has not occurred, you have to use your theoretical because no action has happened. It does not matter what my experiment was, the next roll still has a one-sixth chance. Okay, same thing with flipping a coin. Every time I flip that coin, every next flip still has half of a chance of landing on heads or tails. Okay, the experimental probability is only indicating to you what did occur, what actually did happen, based off of results from previous action, not results of future action. Does that make sense? So you would have to use your theoretical probability here. In order to make a prediction, you have to use that theoretical probability. Now, if I were to give you only an experimental probability and say, okay, this is what has happened, you don't know, like, like maybe I say I'm, I have a bag of Skittles and I'm drawing Skittles out and putting them back in the bag and drawing them out and putting them back in the bag and I'm recording the colors and this is what happened. So I don't tell you how many Skittles are in the bag. I don't tell you how many of each color is in the bag. I only give you the results. That's when you, you can use the experimental probability. But in things like flipping coins, rolling the die, spinning a spinner of, of known sections, things that you do know theoretical probability on, you use a the theoretical probability to predict the next action. Okay? All right. Now... Something interesting, and I would uh, change my color to orange. If you've noticed, each time, are the theoretical and experimental probabilities identical? Are they the same? No. On the other one, they weren't the same either. But the idea of experimental probability is that eventually it will be identical to theoretical. And here's how it gets there. So to get the experimental to be as close as possible to the theoretical. Because that's the idea. Theoretical is like the correct answer. Experimental probability is you working towards that correct answer. Okay? So in order to get your experimental probability to be as close as possible to your theoretical probability, almost equal, then you must perform a large number of trials. That is important. The more trials you perform, the closer the results for experimental get to theoretical. So if I flip a coin 10 times and I might land on heads eight times out of two or eight, uh, eight out of 10, but then maybe I flip it a hundred times. Maybe I get to, I don't know, 
60 uh, out of 100. Then I flip it a thousand times, maybe I get to 528 out of a thousand. The more times I flip it, the closer I'm going to get to that one half mark. Okay? Let me see if I can find, well, we actually don't have time for that, but that's the end of our notes. I'm going to get you into the quizzes. Tomorrow, I'm going to show you what I mean by this with a couple of online simulators.